Today I'm going to take you racing with me and show you what it's like to go on a race. Hopefully this is the view that all the other boats see is just of our stern before we head out. When we are going to race, I love taking a bunch of ladies who haven't done a whole lot of racing before and just let them experience it, see what it's like out there, enjoy the comradeship and the friendships, all the fun parts about the sail trim. The first thing we do when we're at the dock is first we put on our sunscreen, we sew, stow our gear in the ice box and we kind of assign jobs and figure out who's going to do what. Next thing I do is I run through where all of the safety equipment is. We talk about where are the personal flotation devices, we make sure that the Type 4 throwable is within reach of the person at the helm. We identify and locate where are the flares and how are they used. We go over brief radio transmissions, communications, where's the radio located. We set up the sound producing device also known as the horn. We briefly discuss the holding tank and the head because most ladies on the boat have at least been on there once before and know how to do that and then we do a brief on the nav lights although generally when we're racing during the day we don't need them. Next we look at where are some of the things located like the boat hook, some of these other devices that aren't necessarily required. Oh yeah, we do take some pictures of our crew before we go because we always look better before we head out. We talk about the anchor, what it's going to take to get the anchor into the water. We locate the emergency tiller, the softwood plugs, the first aid kit. I always let everyone know where is my bleeding control kit which is complete with some wound packing and North American Rescue tourniquets. No counterfeits for me, thank you. We let go of our shore power, we deal with our dock lines. Before we head out, we look at the wind, which direction is it going to be, what's it going to be doing just as we leave the dock, where we want to set the wheel, which people are going to handle which lines, we look for traffic, and out we go. Once we get out there, we do a lot of right away review. We'll review right away under power. That's when two vessels are each approaching head on under power, like we are in this situation, still under power. Each generally veers to starboard. If we are coming at right angles to another vessel, the vessel to the right has right away, just like cars on a four way. And also, if you are the vessel on the right, you are looking at the vessel on your left and you're seeing their, their green starboard running light, and that would be a go for you. If you're the vessel on the left, you're looking to the right and you're seeing the other boat's port running light, which would be a red light, which would be a stop for you. You would turn and go behind their stern. The other is if you're overtaking anyone, you can overtake on either side, but you can't run it down. The next thing we'll look at is we'll look at right of ways under sail. If you are on a starboard tack, you have right away over anyone on a port tack. No particular reason, they just had to pick one, and that's what they picked they being the people back in the earliest part of time. If you are the starboard tack vessel, you are to stand on course and speed, and the other vessel that's on the port tack is the give way vessel. If it's a situation where both vessels are on a starboard tack or both vessels are on a port tack, then you refer to the one for the leeward rule. And in that case, the vessel to leeward has right of way. It gets to stand on course and speed because it's getting its wind stolen from the vessel to windward. The vessel to windward is the give way vessel because it's taking the other bit's wind and has a lot more control. Once we get out there, we raise our sails, we start looking at the other vessels, we head up to the starting line, we analyze what the wind's going to be doing, what the tide's going to be doing, what the current's going to be doing, and we also look at what our competition's going to be doing. What sails are they going to be flying, how many people are on their boat, how many people versus the wind conditions, is it light air, is it heavy air, and we also talk about the right of ways under sail for racing. Some of the main ones are having room at the mark, which means as we come around the mark, once you're within three, whoever's the closest to the mark, three of their boat lengths is the zone, and when you are the one setting the zone, then you have room at the mark. If someone overtakes you, they've got to give you some space. If you're coming up to the committee boat, you've got to give the committee boat space too as definitely the most right of way at all because it is anchored. We also talk about whether we are to take the marks to port or starboard. Usually we're rounding them to port and a lot of times that means there are going to be some jibes, not always tags. And we also look at where are the shallow areas, what about the other traffic out there on the waterway, and of course the whole time we're racing we're constantly running right away with other boats. On a lot of other boats, when they are racing, the 
habit is in the cockpit for it to be complete silence. And I don't really go with that because I'm racing in a more informal setting, yacht club racings, no huge big time match races, and also because I'm wanting to introduce sailing to other men and women and I want them to get some confidence and I want them to know what it is I'm thinking about as I'm racing. So what I do instead is I kind of do a running commentary and the entire time that we're sailing, I'm asking, what tech are we on? What tech are they on? Who has right away? Why is that? And it's interesting to find out whether people are identifying the right answer to that for the wrong reason or the wrong answer with the right reason. <laughs> so we go back over those starboard ever port, leeward over, windward over and over and over and get everybody just a lot more used to looking at the other boat's sails. One thing that sometimes is a little bit confusing for beginners is when we're sailing dead downwind, we might have the main on one side and the jib on the other side, and the main is the sail that sets it at that point. That's the one that says, if the main is on your port side, you're on a starboard tack. If the main is on your starboard side, you're on a port tack. A lot of times sailing to lee, we have got the main out a little bit toward the wind, and so you can't say the wind's coming across the, the side of the boat, so it's a this tack, you have to look at just where that main is. So that's what we do when we're out there. We're constantly running the right-of-ways. We're constantly discussing why we're making the choices we're making. I'm looking every single time at the jib sheets, constantly, constantly making sure everyone's got two wraps clockwise. We've learned over time that one wrap isn't enough to give you enough friction on the winch and allow you to keep control three wraps tends to get really tangled up so we go for two wraps always always the lazy sheet has got two wraps around it so it's ready the jib sheet and the burden sheet or the working line has got three wraps on it and then over the silver through the black on top of the winch and that's what we do all right i'm here at the yacht club and I'll just show you a little bit before people arrive. We've got a four o'clock pizza party and then a five o'clock regular dinner party and then awards. And the awards are absolutely gorgeous. I'll show this to you in just a moment because they are beautiful and I really want one. And whichever one that we won, I'm going to give another one made so that I can have one too. I ended up not captaining today and it was fantastic because one of my students captained and she was pretty nervous, but I put her on the helm. She did wonderful. It was everything that you want the women's race to be. All women on the boat. And one of my former students captaining the boat, making that quarter million dollar boat go through the water. It was a dream. There were some funny moments, there were some fast moments, there were some slow moments, and overall, we had a really, really good day. And we raised a little bit of money for charity, too. So thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.